let's derive the mean and variance of the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar. Let x1 through xn be n independently drawn observations from a distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. Here, each one of these x's has a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. Expressed another way, we're saying that the expectation of each x, or the expectation of x sub i, x1 through xn, is equal to mu, and the variance of each x is equal to sigma squared. Let x bar be the mean of these n independent observations. x bar is the sample mean. It is a statistic with a sampling distribution. In this video, we are going to mathematically derive the mean and the variance of that sampling distribution. The mean, or expectation, of the random variable x bar is equal to the expectation of the sum of x1 through xn over n. When we multiply by a constant, the expectation gets multiplied by that constant. So we can take 1 over n outside of the expectation, and we're left with this. The expectation of the sum is always equal to the sum of the expectations, and so the expectation of the sum of x1 through xn is equal to the sum of the expectations of x1 through xn, what we have here. But x1 through xn all have the same expectation, just the mean of the population from which we are sampling. And so this is equal to 1 over n times the mean of the population from which we are sampling, which is just mu, plus mu, plus mu, n times. And so this is just 1 over n times n times mu, or just mu. So the expectation of the random variable x bar is just equal to the mean of the population from which we are sampling, mu. And we sometimes write that as mu sub x bar, the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar, is equal to mu. What is the variance of the sampling distribution of x bar? We're going to pursue a similar path here, but there are a couple of important differences. We want to find the variance of the random variable x bar, and that's going to be the variance of the sum of x1 through xn over n. When a random variable gets multiplied by a constant, its variance gets multiplied by the square of that constant. So we can take 1 over n outside of the variance, but we need to square it, and we're left with this. When random variables are independent, as x1 through xn are assumed to be here, the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. So the variance of the sum of x1 through xn is equal to the sum of the variances of x1 through xn, which is what we have here. And x1 through xn all have the same variance, sigma squared. So this is just 1 over n squared times sigma squared added up n times. And so the variance of x bar is equal to 1 over n squared times n sigma squared. And this is just equal to sigma squared over n. So the variance of the sampling distribution of x bar is equal to sigma squared over n. And as notation for that, we often use sigma squared with a subscript of x bar to represent the variance of x bar and so this is equal to simply the same thing, sigma squared over n. And if we want the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, that's simply the square root of the variance of the sampling distribution of x bar. And we write that as sigma sub x bar, and that's simply going to be equal to the square root of this, which is sigma over the square root of n. In summary, the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar has a mean of mu, the mean of the population from which we are sampling, and a standard deviation of sigma, the standard deviation of the population from which we are sampling, divided by the square root of the sample size n. One note to finish. If we are sampling without replacement from a finite population, then the observations are not independent and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar is a little different from what was given here. We'd need to use something called a finite population correction factor, but in practice that's usually not a concern.